church. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's a good day to be here. It's a good day to be in the house of the Lord. Got a few announcements to draw your attention to that are in the bulletin. Uh, this afternoon, the administrative board will have their regular meeting plus our annual financial audit. That's going to start at 4 o'clock. All members of the board are asked to be there to help out with the audit and any financial records that you have may be brought to that. Uh, upcoming this week, April 13th, is our blood drive. That's from 2 o'clock to 7 o'clock. You do need to register in advance. If you need help with that, reach out to Carolee. April 15th is our Good Friday service. That's going to be here, here at 7 o'clock, and it will be uh, streamed on Facebook as well. The next Sunday, being Easter Sunday, our sunrise service will be held at White Hill Presbyterian uh, at 7 o'clock in the morning. They will not host a breakfast afterwards. And then uh, we will have the 10 o'clock Sunday school and the 11 o'clock worship, but there will not be a 9 o'clock worship on Easter Sunday. And then shortly after that, April 25th through the 29th, I will be on vacation. A couple more things to draw your attention to. Just a reminder that we are still collecting for the Ukrainian relief. If you would like to contribute to that, just mark your donation for Ukraine relief and put it in the offering plate and make sure it gets there. As well as uh, the Methodist women are collecting uh, the names of graduates and babies that have been born in the last year to recognize our Youth Sunday event on June 5th. The only other thing to really uh, draw to your attention is that our uh, Duke intern has been assigned to us for the summer. His name is Joshua Beaumont. He'll be with us from May the 29th through August the 7th. Uh, he, I uh, spoke with him last week. He's coming to us straight from the Army. I think he gets out. In one week, it comes to us the very next, so his haircut should be Lucille proof. <laughs> Are there any other announcements? All right, this is a, a special Sunday. This is a Palm and Passion Sunday, and so as such, our our worship is a little bit different. Uh, so I invite you to follow along closely and pay attention in the bulletin as we go through this. But as always, we'll begin by centering ourselves on Christ. As Ralph plays, I call the They brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in its place, inside the tent that David pitched for them. And David offered burnt offerings and offerings of well-being before the Lord. 
When David had finished offering the burnt offerings and the offerings of world meat, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts and distributed food among all the people, the whole multitude of Israel, both men and women, to each a cake of bread, a portion of meat, and a cake of raisins. Then all the people went back to their homes. David returned to bless his household. But Michal, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How the king of Israel honored himself today. Uncovering himself today before the eyes of his servants' maids, as any vulgar fellow might shamelessly uncover himself. David said to Michal, It was before the Lord who chose me in place of your father and all his household to appoint me as prince over Israel, the people of the Lord, that I have danced before the Lord. I will make myself yet more contemptible than this, and I will be abased in my own eyes, but by the maids of whom you have spoken. By them I shall be held in honor. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. This account from 2 Samuel tells of the first triumphal entry in Jerusalem when Jesus' great, 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 great grandfather, King David, entered into the city leading the Ark of the Covenant of God. Like Jesus would do centuries later, David made his way down the streets of Jerusalem, surrounded by people shouting and praising God. It was a thrilling thing to be a part of as God came into the city. God's presence came to be with God's people. And so in his excitement and in his enthusiasm, David threw off his royal robes that were cumbersome and heavy, and he began to dance with all of his might before the Lord. And his exuberance led the people to cheer all the louder, to shout and to rejoice and to praise the Lord. Once the ark was settled in the tabernacle and the sacrifices were made, food was passed around and a feast was held, a banquet, a party in honor of the Lord, as the Lord had come into their midst. But not everyone was happy at this. Michal, David's wife, saw her husband's wild dancing, and she was embarrassed for him. When he came home, she admonished him for his foolishness, his humiliation. Surely this was no way a king should act, and this is not how you behave before the Lord. This was not a way to honor God. But she was wrong. David had a long history for the Lord. God had taken David from the pasture all the way to the palace, but it was not a smooth trip for David. There were many high moments, yes, but there were many, many more low moments. And what David realized was that God was with him through all of those low moments. God was with him in the midst of fear and fighting and his own frailty. And so David knew God. David was in a relationship with the Lord, one that surpassed the lip service that some offered to the Lord, one of death and fear and experience. And so when God came in, when God made his home among humans, David rejoiced. He threw away any pretense that he had to dignity or self-righteousness, and he welcomed the Lord, celebrating a triumphant entry as God has come to be with us. And so in the same way, let us turn to hymn number 715, and let us rejoice before the Lord as God has come into this place. You may stand as you are comfortable as we sing together, rejoice, the Lord is here. Number 715.
Christ this morning. <laughs> Saying, Go into the village ahead of you, 
And as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owner asked them, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus. And after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. The word of God for the people of God. Let us respond together. Hosanna to the Son of David. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. So once again, the streets of Jerusalem are ringing out with loud shouts of praise to God. Hosanna, people call it. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Now he had no royal robes to cast off, and he did not dance as his great-grandfather had done. But once again, the king entered Jerusalem triumphantly, and the people could not help but to praise the Lord. Jesus had been on this journey for some time, slowly and gradually making his way through the countryside from Galilee to Jerusalem. And along the way, he had met and encountered thousands of people. And he offered to them what no one else could. He made the blind see and the deaf hear. He made the mute speak and the lame walk. He restored bodies. He restored minds. He healed hearts. He restored lives. He cast out demons. He walked on water and he calmed storms and he fed multitudes. And now at long last, Jesus was entering Jerusalem. Many had recognized Jesus for what he was, the Messiah. They believed him to be the new king of Israel, their long-awaited savior. And his triumphal entry into Jerusalem was the beginning of a new era, the dawning of a new age. They had seen what he could do. They were the recipients of his miracles, and they shouted for joy as he entered the city. Because at long last, the Lord had returned to Jerusalem. Once again, God had come to be with his people. Of course, not all shouted. The Pharisees and other religious leaders were wary. They were cautious and they were worried. Jesus, after all, was not the first to enter Jerusalem as an expected Messiah. Jesus was not the first person that people had looked to for hope. And amid all of this exuberance, the parade through the streets, this cacophony of noise that was lifted up, these leaders worried that it would attract attention. Attention from the Romans. Attention from those in power who did not want a new king. There were bound to be consequences for the people shouting in the streets. And so, out of caution, out of fear, out of worry, they told Jesus to silence the crowd. But Jesus knew the Lord better than these men ever would. <coughs> for Jesus' God was not some distant, vague concept to be studied about in Scripture and debated in the different rabbinical schools. No, for Jesus, God was Father. God was here. He has spent the last years telling people the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's within your grasp. And so Jesus knew better than anyone else that when God shows up, you cannot stay quiet. There is no silence when God is present. The only 
way that you can respond when God shows up is to praise God. Even the rocks themselves praise God and in our silence lift up their voice. And so through the streets of Jerusalem, praise spread as once again the Lord entered the place. God came to be with us. Let's respond to that by singing number 278. Hosanna, loud Hosanna. You may stand here. Number 278. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. They offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. The word of God for the people. Thanks be to God. The third time now, the shouts of a crowd are heard in Jerusalem. And for a third time, a king makes his way through the same streets. This is a very different parade. Gone are the trumpets, gone are the palm branches, gone are the cheers and the rejoicing, gone is the word Hosanna. Instead, the words linger in the air, crucify, crucify. Now the king walks the streets as a condemned man, his face bruised and bloody and spat upon very object of his own death on his back until he can carry it in foot. What happened to cause such a change, such a radical shift in the city of Jerusalem? I don't think God showed up. 
the Lord came to be with his people, but it was not as the people wanted. Gone were the miracles, the signs, and wonders. Gone were the exuberant energy that will overthrow the enemy and put those that we hate underneath our feet. Instead, there was surrender. There is a laying aside of weapons and rights and a casting aside of stones. Instead of a feast being given by the Lord, the Lord told them to go out and provide a feast for others, for those that didn't deserve it. And so, once again, Jesus walked the streets of Jerusalem, not entering the city of God, but being driven out. Yet, this was a triumphant entry. Though he was despised by the very ones who had cheered him days ago, though he was rejected by those who had celebrated him, though he was hated by the ones who claimed to love him, though he was abandoned by those who swore to follow him, yet Jesus triumphed that day. His death on the cross was for our sake. His death on the cross overcame our sin. His death on the cross defeated death itself. And though we refuse to go with him, this long walk through Jerusalem and up Golgotha was a triumphant entry. Behold our King. Behold his triumph for our sake. And we don't often come to the cross. Because the cross is too uncomfortable for us. We like the triumphant entry of Palm Sunday, and we like the triumphant resurrection of Easter Sunday. And yet, in the middle, there's the cross. The cross that we have to go to if we want the hope of resurrection. But let us linger there this morning. Let's bring it to our minds. Let us behold our King. A king who was triumphant as he died. You see, we welcomed the Lord when he served us, but we rejected him when he didn't give us what we wanted. But the most amazing thing of all, the most incredible thing that has ever been, is that the Lord never once rejected us. What a wondrous love is that. I invite you to pause to let the Spirit bring to mind the cross of Jesus Christ. Let you consider what Christ endured on your behalf.
given the chance to respond to the Lord by praying together a litany that is based on Psalm 22. This is the psalm that Jesus himself quoted as he hung on the cross, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And the litany of this prayer leads us to various stanzas. At the end of each stanza, I will say, Father, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Spirit, have mercy. We are asked to respond together in unison. O God, we cry out by the name. O Lord, be not far away. Let's pray. Father, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Spirit, have mercy. O God, we cry out by the O Lord, be not far away. My God, my God, why have you forsaken? Jesus cried out from the cross, yet we were the ones who forsook you, O Lord. For the great sacrifice of Jesus Christ, we give you thanks, even as we lament its necessity. We pray this morning for our own forgiveness, and we ask you to help us to forgive others. Father, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Spirit, have mercy. O oh God, we cry out by name. O oh Lord, be not far away. The hands that reached out to touch the blind, the cripple, and the cast out, were nailed to a cross. With his bones out of joint and his side pierced, his life was poured out like water. Yet in that water there is healing. We pray for healing this morning. Heal our bodies and our minds and our hearts. Heal those we love. Heal this place where we live. Heal your church. Father, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Spirit, have mercy. O God, we cry out by day. O Lord, be not our Lord. Jesus was surrounded by crowds cheering for his blood like a pack of wild dogs or ravenous lions. So sometimes we find ourselves surrounded. But far too often we find ourselves as a part of the pack part of the crowd. Lord, rescue the perishing this morning. When we are surrounded, be quick to deliver us. And when we are surrounding others, be quick to deliver us. For all those with no hope, for those whom we have hurt, for those who have been cast aside or ignored, for the grief and the anxiety that is unseen, we pray. Father, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Spirit have mercy. O God, we cry out by day. O Lord, be not far away. Creator of the heavens and the earth, you hung on a cross suspended between heaven and earth. You died for our sin. Yet that was not the end. In the tragedy of your death, there is resurrection. In the harshness of this world, there is We praise you. For you are our hope, our strong rule. And you, the poor, shall feast and be satisfied. The sick shall be healed. The lonely shall be comforted. The sorrowing shall rejoice. All the ends of the earth shall remember what the Lord has done and shall turn to him in praise. Father, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Spirit, have mercy. O Lord, we cry out. O Lord. Uh, all right. Amen. Let's turn our hymnals to number 504. Let's prepare to enter this holy week by singing together the old brother cross. You may stand as you are.
finish. Go forth slowly, taking your time, not rushing through this holy week, walking alongside Jesus through the streets of Jerusalem all the way to the cross. Linger there with Christ that you may know his death and through his death you may know his resurrection. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.